Well, for Afghanistan's women and girls, the return of the Taliban means fear and uncertainty. Since the extremists were ousted 20 years ago, women have taken on more prominent roles in Afghan society. In politics, women were guaranteed more than a quarter of parliamentary seats. Several even held the ministerial posts, uh, like Soraya Dalil, who served as Minister of Public Health, and was later named the country's permanent representative to the UN. Women also made an impact on the security forces by joining the police and the army, with some rising through the ranks, like Brigadier General Khatul Mohammadzai. The number of women and girls receiving an education also increased significantly, the Taliban having long prohibited schooling for girls over the age of 10. Now around a fifth of all university students are women. So under the Taliban, access to even basic health care was restricted for women. So a lot has changed in the last two decades, and now many fear Afghanistan's women will once again be stripped of their rights. Well, Hosna Jalil is a former Deputy Minister of Women's Affairs and former Deputy Minister of Interior Affairs in the Afghan government. Uh, welcome to DW. Um, how are you feeling as you watch the news and speak to colleagues and family at home? Thank you so much for having me. Um, how do I feel is something else, and how would I, I would say, um, foresee the future for all of us is something else. I would say whatever we worked for, we built, um, and we built with our own hands, with the facilitation and the support of the international community for the last 20 years, not just for ourselves, but for, for, for the uh, future of our little kids and the generations to come. That's lost. That's gone. Um, I would say we have had just uh, uh, 20 years, like a 20 years of trial between one, uh, I would say, Taliban ruling regime and the, the second version of Taliban's ruling regime. And sometimes I would say that is the very, maybe the very emotional version of me saying this. Sometimes I would say if we were supposed to hand over everything so quickly and we, if we were supposed to be left behind in the middle of nowhere, to be left in the middle of nowhere, all of a sudden, I wish we hadn't started this, this, I mean, this war. We start the war, we sacrifice our lives, we do a compromise, I would say, uh, everything for, for a better future. Uh, but if, if there was not a future, why did we start it? Right. So when the Taliban... Late in 2001, why we have been invited to, to, to join a war? So when the, 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 the Taliban this time say that they will respect women's rights within the framework of Islamic law, uh, clearly uh, you don't believe that. I don't buy it for a couple of facts. I've spent my childhood during Taliban regime. I fought with them after the collapse of Taliban regime. I fought with them for 20 years for a good cause, for a legitimate cause. Uh, I've lived with them in a district of Afghanistan. So I would say I don't buy it for a couple of facts first. When they've been asked last year, when they've been doing the peace deal with the US, um, they've been asked, what do you mean with the uh, flexibility when it comes to women's rights? They are like, according to Islamic rules. Islamic rules was applied or Sharia law was applied during their own regime as well. And Sharia law for them meant lack of access to education, restricted access to health services, no access to justice, no shelter, no food security, no employment, literally nothing. So when they've been asked, what do you mean by Sharia law? They've been stuck and they have not been able to give us, give us the details, the detailed information. Plus, Right now, I am in touch with my, um, I would say, Afghans on the ground, with my family on the ground. And they're like, OK, uh, they've allowed the health service providers, the women in the health sector, they've allowed them to, uh, to, to start working again or to rejoin the, the new ruling regime. But that's not the change of policy. Why do we try to fantasize that Tal Taliban has changed just because they are allowing women to work in the health sector? My mom was a medical doctor and she was allowed to work during Taliban regime as a gynecologist for the women. But that's not also, again, 
that's not part of what we call it again for the last 20 years. Understood. Women's, uh, uh, I would say, presence in the technology, women's presence in media, women's presence in sports, women's presence in so many other sector. And lastly, women's presence in the security sector, that is our achievement. But they have already started um, making women to step down from their posts. The first thing they did with the, taking, with the takeover of the national TV, they changed the anchor of very professionally trained women. Right. They changed it. So why do we fantasize that Taliban has changed and their policies for women has changed? No, it's uh -huh. not changed. Although they are under pressure, uh, may, they might feel under pressure because of the international community, because they, they are still having their two eyes. But I'm afraid that the day that Afghanistan would be forgotten once again and it becomes irrelevant and no one would be interested to watch the news or to, to read the news about Afghanistan, that is the worst day. And that is when Taliban would give us right. their, their, their real, I would say, uh, fates. And so just, just following on from that and going back to what you said before, you, you said given the, 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 the speed of the American and the, the NATO withdrawal, just effectively just scrambling out of Afghanistan, you, you, you said that perhaps it would have been better had, the, had these changes not happened if they were to leave so quickly. Well, now we have... Uh, the US and, and Britain and 18 other countries um, releasing this letter uh, expressing concern about Afghan women's rights to education, uh, work and freedom of movement. How do you, how do you view that letter and those sentiments from, from those people who you seem to uh, feel left you so badly in the lurch? Let me just be clear on one thing, because whenever we speak of the very irresponsible withdrawal, we are held accountable for the miseries we go through. Yes, I do take as, as part of the Afghan, I would say, nation and as part of the Afghan government who has served until, the, uh, until uh, I would say, the last two months. I mean, I, I, I left my job uh, two months ago, so I've served until June. I do hold myself responsible and accountable for the miseries we go, but I do share the responsibility with our international allies. So I would say we have not been expecting a lifelong presence of the international troops or the international support, but we have been expecting a much better responsible, I would say, withdrawal. And it's like, for me, it's like we just want to get rid of Afghanistan, which is not fair. Right. It's not fair. We have been partners for shared cause, although our interests and cause might have been different at some point, but it has been shared big time. It has been shared big time because they have been defeating international terrorist, terrorist groups in my home. And they, okay. just to make sure that they don't reach to their doors as well. So that was the commitment, but I'm really happy when the countries, again, they're saying like, okay, we are concerned about it because the US president just a few days ago, he mentioned that I don't care about the women's right of Afghanistan. I've never been there. I, I don't care about the minorities' right. I've, I've not been there for, 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 that was not my cause. Right. I understand that was my cause, but we had so many other shared values. Okay. We had so many other shared causes. So I would say it makes me happy if they, again, express their concerns as far as they mean it. Right. As far as that is not to make the international community, the individuals across the globe who believes in humanity, I, 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 I really hope that they don't try to make them calm down. All right. Hosni Jalil, former yeah. Afghan government minister, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.